Do vaccines cause PMR? This is a really important question because PMR or polymyalgia rheumatica is a disease that affects older people who often get vaccines. And some people would say, I got PMR after I got fill in the blank vaccine. And so is it a trigger? Is it just a coincidence? What do we know so far? So I'm Dr. Megan, the prednisone pharmacist, and I'm here to help people with PMR because so many of you are stuck on prednisone. So I wanted to answer this question many of you have asked. I wanted to review the latest evidence with two reports, one of them going over an entire country's results and another one that shows three case reports of specific individuals who took a vaccine and then got PMR. So what is PMR? PMR is an inflammatory condition where there's often pain in the shoulders, an inability to lift a hand to your face or strap a bra or get restful sleep at night and roll over on your own. Things like that are really hard to do when your shoulder is not working properly. And so you end up taking prednisone for a long time and you wanna know what caused this? Why am I suddenly, I was previously healthy and now I'm totally debilitated and unable to take care of myself. I can't even get out of bed on my own, right? That's a question many are asking. So when we had the opportunity for millions of people to get vaccines all at once, we can study the incidence of what happens after that vaccination. So in 2021, when the COVID vaccines were given, millions and billions of times, they were able to track this data. And it wasn't the first time that vaccines have been possibly linked to PMR. And I'll go through some other vaccines that have case reports in the past as well. So is it really a vaccine specific effect or is it just a coincidence? Let's look into the research. So Jarrett or maybe Jero, I'm not sure how to pronounce French words, but he did a survey of the country of France and the vaccines given there and what the incidence of PMR, GCA, and other complications were. They looked at over 70 million doses given to adults aged 50 and older in France. And that's an important distinction because PMR can only be diagnosed if you're 50 or older. It's not going to be PMR or meet the guidelines for PMR if you're less than 50 years old. And of those 70 million doses, they found 179 cases of PMR and 54 cases of giant cell arteritis, which is GCA, a related inflammatory disorder. And those were all diagnosed within one month after vaccination. So how many is that per million? The reporting rate for PMR was 7.1 cases per 1 million vaccinated individuals. And for GCA, it was 2.1 cases of GCA per 1 million vaccinated individuals. What's tricky is when you compare this incidence of getting PMR or GCA with the incidence that normally occurs with no trigger that's being identified. It's 112 per 100,000 individuals, 50 and older. So I want you to notice there's a zero difference there. 112 out of 100,000 get it naturally without any vaccine trigger compared to seven per 1 million. That's 10 times more people. So this is their statement. Considering the relative risk of both PMR and GCA per adult, and the injected dose, we observe a lower incidence of these diseases following COVID-19 vaccination compared to the non-vaccinated population. This finding poses challenges in interpreting pharmacovigilance studies. So that's what this is, a pharmacovigilance study. So it, it's really tricky because your chance of getting it in general are much higher than what it's showing your chance of getting it from the vaccine from that study is. So let me share those case reports of individuals and the pattern that we identify from them. So Irani and colleagues in 2024 published three case reports. These were all new onset diagnoses of polymyalgia rheumatica 
following the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine for COVID-19. All three patients developed PMR symptoms within one to 14 days after their second dose of the vaccine. All cases responded well to prednisone or methotrexate therapy and were able to put their disease into full treatment and no longer experiencing symptoms of PMR. And the timing definitely suggests a link, but is it just a coincidence? Is it a trigger or is it just an unfortunate timing coincidence? Well, what about other vaccines? For the influenza vaccine, one review found 28 reports of PMR or GCA following the flu vaccine. And most of those cases occurred within three months of vaccination. That's an incredibly low incidence compared to the general likelihood of getting PMR. What about the zoster vaccine to prevent herpes zoster reactivation in the form of shingles? One study found a higher rate of GCA in individuals who received the zoster vaccine compared to those who didn't. It showed 75 per 100,000 for those who got the vaccine compared to 41 cases per 100,000 for those who didn't get the vaccine. What about hepatitis B and tetanus vaccines? Isolated cases of PMR have been identified after treatment with those vaccines, but the rates are so low that definitive risk is impossible to calculate. It's a tricky situation no matter what, because nobody wants to get these infectious diseases. Nobody wants to get the flu and die of the flu, as you're more likely to do if you're an older person who could be getting PMR. Nobody wants to get shingles. If you've ever talked to someone who has active shingles, it's horrific. The skin is so painful, you feel like you can't even wear a shirt or put a sheet over your body. Like you just want to run around naked or not even run. You don't want to do anything. You're just in such incredible pain. Just touch is painful. And then tetanus is fatal if untreated. So it's a very tricky situation because these vaccines save lives and prevent terrible complications but are they a trigger for PMR or GCA? So those case reports showed after the second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine by Pfizer, it happened to three people that they suddenly got PMR. So that does show a temporal association. That means the timing makes sense. This suggests a possible immune response as a trigger for PMR, especially if you're genetically predisposed to this anyway. If you have Northern European ancestor, like Sweden, Denmark, the United Kingdom, places like that, like me, <laughs> you have an increased risk. So there's the immune response hypothesis. This is what it says. Vaccines trigger immune activation to protect against infections. In rare cases, this immune response might overreact in some individuals, leading to inflammatory conditions like PMR. And then potentially some ingredients in the vaccines that aren't the active ingredient may also be causing an immune response or other factors might be at play. Maybe it was truly coincidental. Maybe there were other infections or viruses that were actually happening in the body at the time and the person didn't even know about it. So should you be concerned about vaccines causing PMR? Here's some reassurance. PMR is incredibly rare after vaccination. Just seven cases in 1 million individuals who would be likely to get PMR at a likelihood of 112 out of 100,000 individuals. If you were to extrapolate that to a million, that means 1,120 per million individuals versus seven caused by the vaccine. 1,000, in normal situations versus seven by the vaccine. It's a dramatically smaller number. And the other thing to consider is vaccines do save lives. I know that's a really politically sensitive situation and a lot of people feel really strongly about this, but statistically speaking, vaccines save lives. Billions more people live on this earth today because they are not dying of smallpox and measles, mumps, rubella, tetanus, and so many other infectious diseases that truly do save lives. And the potential risk for triggering PMR is infinitesimally small compared to the risk of those conditions. 
like your chance of getting the flu and dying of the flu is much higher than your chance of getting PMR from a flu vaccine. While PMR is a very miserable condition, it is not life-threatening. It makes life a lot harder, and I never want to make it sound like I don't appreciate how terrible it is to be a person with PMR, but it's a treatable condition. You're not going to die of PMR, whereas you can die of the infectious diseases that vaccines prevent and treat. So in summary, while there's a small possibility the vaccines may trigger PMR, GCA, or other inflammatory conditions to appear for the first time or to reactivate an existing disease, the overall risk is very low. The evidence suggests that vaccination is not a major cause of PMR, and the benefits of vaccination in preventing severe illness far outweigh the risks. So if you have concerns about vaccines and PMR, be sure to talk to your doctor about your concerns. They can help you decide in your specific situation with your genetic predisposition, what is the best choice working with you closely in a shared decision-making situation. And if you want to know what I've learned all about PMR and how to treat it, I went to a Harvard Medical School seminar and learned all about the latest, greatest treatment options for PMR that did not exist five years ago. So check out that video now. Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist. Mm -hmm.